John Sorrell. Present. Thank you. Go ahead, Thank Mr. Crutchfield. Uh, tonight we start a new term for the Planning and Zoning Board. As with the start of each new term, there are new members. I'd like to welcome and thank our three new board members, Andy Coe, Jeff Moncrief, Michael Roselli. The returning board members may notice there are a few little procedural changes that we're implementing tonight. Just to enhance the flow of the meeting. As we go into the meeting, I just want to remind everyone that we will continue to use the Cary Community Plan as our guiding document for this board. Our role is to function as citizen advisors to the town council who will make the final decision on all rezoning activity. Your citizen opinions based on the Cary Community Plan document are very important in advising our town leaders. Again, I'd like to welcome our new members. While this is a public meeting, please be aware this is not a public hearing. There is no opportunity for the public to speak during this meeting. If you have comments about any of these cases, we encourage you to reach out to the staff case manager or the applicant by email or phone. You may reach out to our board members through email. You may also contact directly the council through email or during one of the public speaks out portions of any regularly scheduled town council meeting. Because we are meeting remotely, all motions, seconds, and votes will be verbally obtained. These meetings may be streamed live on the town council, town of Cary website or on YouTube and are available online on YouTube if anybody would like to view past meetings. The next item on our agenda is the actual adoption of the agenda. Could I ask someone to please give a motion to adopt the agenda? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda. This is Jessica Pearson. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. This Thank is Mike Priscilla. Thank you, Mike. I will now call on each of you, if you would just state I, if you agree to adopt the agenda. Andy Aye. Coe? Mary Jo Hill? Aye. Mary Jo Hill? Aye. Thank you. Jessica McClure? Aye. Jeff Moncrief? Aye. Jessica Pearson? Aye. Mike Roselli? Aye. Don Sorrell? Aye. And I, Steve Crutchfield, also vote aye. Now, can I get a motion to approve the September 27 meeting minutes as they are currently posted? This is Mary Jo. I move to accept the meeting minutes of the last meeting. Thank you. May I get a second? Second. Second. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to call the roll one more time to get approval for the meeting minutes. John Sorrell? Aye. Mike Roselli? Aye. Jessica Pearson? Aye. Jeff Moncrief? Yeah. Aye, I'm sorry, I thought it turned off mute. Aye. Okay. Uh, Jessica McClure? Aye. Mary Jo Hill? Aye. Andy Coe? Aye. And I, Steve Crutchville, also vote aye. Tonight we have two cases. The first case on the agenda is 21 REZ 06 McCrimmon Parkway and Lewis Stephen Drive rezoning. Planning Manager Katie Dreyer will share the staff's presentation. Following the presentation, the applicants will share their remarks. All board members will have an opportunity to ask questions of staff and the applicant. Ms. Dreyer, you may now proceed. 
Good evening, board. This is a request to rezone property um, that's located at Lewis Stevens Drive and McCrimmon Parkway. The property consists of three parcels which front Lewis Stevens Drive. The McCrimmon Parkway extension will traverse through the southern portion of the site. The current zoning is R40 and the applicant is proposing to rezone to transitional residential conditional use. Proposed zoning conditions include limiting the uses to townhouses and detached dwellings with a maximum of 160 dwellings. Up to 15 of the units may be detached dwellings. They've also proposed architectural commitments so that there will be a front facing entry, two car garage, minimum roof pitch requirements, and gable roofs with front facing gables for all units. They've also proposed um, that two materials from the pick list below will be included on all front elevations and will also be included on the side and rear elevations for dwellings that are adjacent to McCrimmon Parkway and Lewis Stevens Drive. And these uh, materials include the cementitious siding, brick veneer, stone veneer, shake siding, cedar shingles, board and batten. And lastly, they proposed a community gathering space of 10,000 square feet which is twice that required of the LDO. Along with the zoning conditions, the applicant has submitted a concept plan, which indicates the location of the future McCrimmon Parkway extension, the extension of Aidenbrock Drive, a connection to the future Greenway corridor to the west, and existing stream buffers along the western property line. The concept plan identifies a streetscape buffer along the southern property line and a 30 foot wide buffer along the northern property line. According to Cary's GIS maps, a portion of the property is impacted by stream buffers, but field determination of that would occur at the time of development plan review. Looking at the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Facilities Master Plan, the Kit Creek Greenway extends along the west side of Kit Creek. Although the Kit Creek Greenway corridor is located on an adjacent parcel, a greenway connection from the site to the greenway corridor will be required at the time of the development plan. The transportation plan indicates that Lewis Stevens Road or Drive and McCrimmon Parkway are both thoroughfares. McCrimmon Parkway currently stops at Lewis Stevens Road or Drive, excuse me. McCrimmon Parkway um, will eventually be extended along the southern portion of the assemblage. Uh, the applicant will be responsible for constructing a four lane divided roadway. In 2019, uh, Carey conducted a feasibility study for the McCrimmon Parkway extension to identify and examine context sensitive design alternatives consistent with the vision and goals set forth in the Cary Community Plan. The study included multiple opportunities for public input, including both an open house and public comment period. The conceptual design and feasibility plan is reflected in the applicant's concept plan. The McCrimmon Parkway extension will ultimately extend from Lewis Stevens Drive to NC55 Highway. There are presently no overhead utility lines along the site's frontage on Lewis Stevens Drive, other than one power pole delivering power directly to the site. Per the LDO, all utility lines are required to be installed underground. Staff's analysis of the Cary Community Plan is, finds that policies from the live, work, engage, shape, and move chapters are applicable. We'll start with the future growth framework map, which is found in the shape chapter of the Cary Community Plan. It designates the site to be within a mixed neighborhood development category. This next map that you're looking at is a zoomed out version of the, um, the map that we were just looking at. Um, it states in the plan that the mixed neighborhood development category um, encompasses and describes neighborhoods and housing in the northwestern part of Cary. So this is generally area that's within two miles of Research Triangle Park. This map is of Cary's Future Growth Framework map and it shows the site's location. It's just south of Highway 540 and RTP and east of Highway 55. Mixed neighborhoods are intended to have a substantial variety of housing types, unit sizes, lot sizes, and densities. A virtual neighborhood meeting for the rezoning was facilitated by planning staff on June 2nd of 2021. 
According to information submitted by the applicant, there were 14 nearby property owners who, at who attended and participated. Questions and concerns expressed at the meeting included interest in greenway connections, buffer requirements adjacent to the Cedar Bend neighborhood, timeline for construction, tree preservation adjacent to Cedar Bend, and questions about the mix of uses. These concerns and questions are summarized in the attached meeting minutes submitted by the applicant. Uh, before the public hearing, uh, staff received one email request uh, with um, questions about the rezoning. And at the town council public hearing in August, there were no public hearing comments submitted. Council had questions expressed regarding materials on all sides of the building. It was also questions about uh, learning more about the community gathering area for the site. So since the public hearing, the applicant has added the following conditions. They increased the finished material commitment to include the side and rear of all units adjacent to McCrimmon Parkway and Lewis Stevens Drive. It increased the community gathering area to a minimum of 10,000 square feet which is more than twice the requirement of the LDO. Staff's preliminary finding is that the rezoning is consistent with the Imagine Carry Community Plan. Staff finds that it supports uh, policies from the Live, Work, Move, and Shape chapters. Uh, we note that townhouses with a limited amount of detached dwellings would add additional housing options, especially being close to the Research Triangle Park. The development of the site uh, would build, also build the future McCrimmon Parkway extension along the southern property line. So this concludes my presentation. The applicant's representative is here to speak with you about the applicant's request. And following that, um, both, both staff and the applicant will be available to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. So Matthew, you should be able to uh, begin. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Um, good evening. I'm Matthew Carpenter with Parker Poe, 301 Fayetteville Street, here on behalf of the applicant, TriPoint Homes. Also with me tonight and available for questions are Bob Davenport of TriPoint Homes and Adam Ashball of ESP Associates, um, the civil engineer on the project. Katie did a great job uh, orienting you to the site, so I'll focus on the ways this rezoning will benefit town residents and embody the goals of the community plan. First, the rezoning will help create a mix of housing types in the area by allowing additional density on an infill site. This is consistent with both the property future growth framework designation and several policies in the Cary Community Plan. Mixed neighborhood designation recommends the TRCU zoning that we're requesting and calls for a mix of housing types, including townhomes. Live policy two states that housing should accommodate a variety of lifestyles, households, ages, cultures, market preferences, and incomes. Live policy five recommends residential development on infill sites that's designed to acknowledge the surrounding context. And although it's somewhat surprising here, this is actually an infill site with fully developed neighborhoods to the north and south. Adjacent to the south is the Cedar Bend neighborhood which is a single family detached subdivision with 37 homes and lots in that neighborhood are as small as a 10th of an acre. And adjacent to the north is the McCrimmon at the park um, community, which includes a mix of single family detached and townhomes. So the requested zoning will facilitate a mix of housing types by allowing townhomes on a centrally located site. Second, the request will allow additional residential density to help decrease sprawl and meet rising housing demand in West Cary. Site is just two miles from Research Triangle Park, and with new businesses moving to RTP, housing demand will continue to rise. The proposed development will meet, the, meet this demand and help decrease miles traveled for RTP employees. Third, the project will involve the extension of McCrimmon Parkway along the southern boundary of the property and the extension of Addenbrock Drive which will improve traffic flow in the area. Specifically, MOVE Policy 4 states that transportation investments should be focused on bridging connectivity gaps. These two improvements will complete a planned carry street in Adambrock Drive and pave the way for the future extension of McCrimmon Parkway further west. 
And one small point, as you can see that on the aerial of the property, the logical extension of McCrimmon um, across Lewis Stevens Drive would really traverse both the subject property and the Cedar Bend subdivision to the south. Although Cedar Bend was developed as recently as 2014, the McCrimmon Parkway study had not yet been completed and the developer wasn't required to dedicate right away for the extension. For that reason, this project will be dedicating the right of way for the entire McCrimmon extension to the length of the southernmost property line. And just to kind of give you a, a ballpark of the amount of land that, that will be dedicated, um, right now, based on the, the four lane street type, it appears to be about six and a half acres. Um, and so there are also stub streets to the north and south of the property, and there's stubs for Addenbrock Drive. Um, and so this project allows the opportunity to fill in a gap um, where there are sub streets existing to both the north and the south of the property. I know a lot of times development comes in and um, you know sub streets are built and they sit for years and years and years. And here we have the, the opportunity to connect to um, and kind of complete the gap there. Fourth, as shown in the concept plan, the project will involve the dedication of greenway easements and connection to the existing Town of Cary Greenway easement corridor. This will facilitate a well-connected greenway network. And as Katie mentioned, a greenway easement is, is our corridor is already in place to the west of the site, um, which is a lot of times a big, a big hindrance to getting you know, greenway connections made, it's the acquisition of the easements. And so those are already in place. And eventually the greenway will connect with the internal sidewalks in this proposed neighborhood which will connect to McCrimmon Parkway. And that's important because the site is only a quarter mile from McCrimmon Corners, which includes the Harris Teeter and several other shops and restaurants. So with the Greenway connection and the sidewalks and the extension of McCrimmon Parkway, um, once all those things are completed, residents of this development would be able to walk or bike from the Kit Creek Greenway across the site and to McCrimmon Corner, Corners where um, there are existing shops and restaurants. So we think it, it offers an opportunity for, you know, alternative forms of transportation and for people to live, um, you know, dine and hang out in the same place that they live. So finally, the, the offered rezoning conditions will ensure compatibility with existing uses and help preserve neighborhood character. We've added a number of architectural conditions which require that the townhomes have a front-facing entry, two-car garage, front-facing gables, gable roofs, and a mix of building materials. And to, to give you an idea of, of the quality that the TriPoint builds, um, they've already built a couple communities in the Triangle, and so if you want to take a look at those, you're just curious. There are the towns at North Salem and Apex, and Waterside at 915 Jones Franklin Road, which backs up to Lake Johnson. And in, in the conditions, we've also included a density limit um, to ensure that the intensity is appropriate for this area. And so there will be a max of 160 total dwellings and a max of 15 detached dwellings. And so the, the 160 number based on the acreage, it's about 32 acres, comes out to 5.04 dwelling units an acre, which is, is less than the six units an acre that is allowed in uh, transitional residential zoning. So we're conditioning our request down below what would otherwise be offered uh, with the TR, TR zoning without conditions. So also, as Katie mentioned, we've revised the proposed conditions based on comments from council that we heard at the public hearing. First, we've strengthened the architectural conditions since the application was filed. Building material requirements originally only apply to front elevations. And since the public hearing, We've made the building material conditions applicable to side and rear elevations adjacent to McCrimmon Parkway and Lewis Stevens Drive. And we believe this will improve the, the visual appeal of the neighborhood and the look and feel of the, the streetscape along uh, McCrimmon and Lewis Stevens. We've also committed to a minimum of 10,000 square feet of community gathering spaces, which is uh, double the standard LDO requirement, which I believe is 5,000 square feet. Um, and th these community gathering spaces are defined in, in the LDO, and they, they generally are, are things like parks, um, open spaces, 
you know, their benches or, or other features where residents can kind of spend time outside. So in sum, we believe that this request is in the public interest because it will add high quality housing stock to the area on an infill site to help meet rising housing demand. It will facilitate the extension of McCrimmon Parkway and Adam Brock Drive to improve traffic flow. It will promote walkability and alternative modes of transportation by connecting to the Cary Greenway system. And so, you know, we think that given, given all those things, this uh, project will help, help the area and offer uh, a mix of housing types. So thank you for your time and we're available for, for any questions. Okay, well, I've, I've, is there, are there any more uh, comments from the applicant? Is that it, Matthew? That, that's all we have for now, yep. But uh, you know, we that's have a team I here. Want to to ask questions, so. Okay, thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the opening remarks, um, the Cary Community Plan is in place to guide development in the town of Cary. For the board members, if you, if you think about your questions that we'll be getting to shortly, keep in mind how this proposed case fits or does not fit the community plan. And when we get around to making a motion, it would be helpful to describe how you see your motion impacting the community plan, for example, with work, shape, or live chapters. And while this is really not a requirement, it's something that I want to get us to start thinking about this this season. It would be a great help to the helping the town council understand how you think this plan actually applied. How, how you think this case actually applied to the plan? Okay, I'm um, now. I'd like to ask the board members uh, to share any questions that you may have for the staff or the applicant. And we're going to start out with uh, John Sorrell. John, any questions? I have one question for staff. Um, there, there seems to be a balancing act shown here with the um, location of the right of way trying to line up as reasonably as possible with McCrimmon Parkway and providing some buffer on the pro between this and the property to the south. Um, that that balancing act um is that fairly well locked in from the transportation study that was done or is this an alignment that's offered by the developer um how how has that been sorted out hey yes i can start by answering that question and uh, we also have priyatham conda with our transportation on the uh, with our transportation department on the line and priyatham Please feel free to, to round out any comments that I have or um, information that I have to share. Um, the town of Cary completed a feasibility study for this extension. Um, and um, the slide that you're looking at right now shows the completed feasibility study. Um, Recruitment Parkway is, um, and the extension of the NCDOT road. Um, so um, there has not been design, you know, official design or funding for construction of that, but this is the general alignment from the feasibility study. So the, the applicants, when they submitted their concept plan, um, Town of Cary staff asked them to um, overlay the feasibility study results, which is what you're looking at here with their plan. So the actual location of the road was predetermined by the feasibility study. And to your question regarding the, um, the amount of buffer to the south, I, I will um, I will note that the Cedar Bend neighborhood, when that was um, developed a few years ago, it did acknowledge the McCrimmon Parkway extension um, on the development plan. So, if, as you can see, there is about a 15 foot buffer along the northern property line for the lots in Cedar Bend, and again, that's the neighborhood to the south. Um, and they also they also measured, um, you know. X number of feet to the north um, to account for what would essentially be perfect. Thank you, Jessica. To what would essentially be a, um, a 50 foot streetscape. So what you're looking at now with this slide is a copy of the approved development plan for the Cedar Bend neighborhood back from 2012, I believe. Um, and you can see a 15 foot buffer along those rear property lines, plus, um, you know, 
whatever that was on the property to the north, which is the site that we're looking at now, to essentially equal a 50-foot streetscape. Fantastic. That answers my question. Uh, it seemed like a, uh, a reasonable balance and how that fit in, and I'm really glad to hear that's been you know, previously discussed. Thank you. That it, John? That's it for me. Perfect. Um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but just for the new board members, we will come back and have comments after a motion is made. So um, this this portion is really directed for questions. Uh, Mike Roselli, any any questions for the staff or applicant? Yeah, I have a few questions for staff um, related to greenways. Do we have a uh, estimated time of when the Kit Creek Greenway uh, will be constructed? I do not believe that there's a date set for that yet at this at this point. Does the, the has the applicant been given the option to uh, pay fee in lieu for the connection until it's built, or are they going to be required to build to as far as they could build? Sure, generally that's that's determined at the time of development plan review. Um, they the applicant did um, acknowledge a connection to you know to the greenway. Um, but generally, once you get into those detailed plans during the engineering stage, that's when um, the, the actual details of how that will work um, generally play out. Sure. I just, I just want to make sure that they're not going to get stuck trying to build something they're not actually able to build. And um, re related to that and pedestrian improvements, um, since the Cary Community Plan covers, uh, you know, the, there's a whole chapter on move. What are the... Uh, Proposed pedestrian improvements on uh, Louis Stevens Drive, or has that already been improved? Um, the applicant will be required to widen Louis Stevens um, Drive to its ultimate um, build out, and that would be uh, per the Cary Community Plan. And with that, there would be um, a requirement to um, to build sidewalks along the road along their property frontage. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Pearson, any questions? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I was just curious in looking at the the plan that was provided as part of the rezoning application. Is McCrim, what is the development going to build internal roads within the site and not access um, townhouses or units off of McCrimmon Parkway, off of the future extension? Um, yes, I can start by speaking to that um, and the applicants welcome to, to share information as well. Um, the, the town, I can start with the town of Cary's requirements. Um, Cary requires streetscapes off of thoroughfares and collector roads, um, which would prevent individual access points on, directly onto those thoroughfare and collector roads. So McCrimmon Parkway, the extension would be a thoroughfare, um, Lewis Stevens is as well. So we would not allow individual access points onto those roads and they would have to buffer it with streetscapes. Okay. It's Katie. And, and I, I will add that, um, if I may, that there will be internal streets uh, throughout the development. Um, and there will be the, the Addenbrock Drive extension from, from the north to the south. So, so Addenbrock will connect um, from the northern property line to down south to McCrimmon Parkway. Um, and that that's part of the, the town street plan. Um, and so we'll have that connection to McCrimmon, but, um, but there won't be you know, as far as as far as we know now, we haven't finalized you know locations of the town halls, but we don't plan for there to be you know direct access to town halls fronting on the Crimson Parkway. So, I mean, in terms of the internal roads within the development, they would be coming off of Addenbrock uh, connection. Yes, and there also may be another uh, access point, you know, further east. Down McCrimmon, um, but we don't we don't know exactly where that is yet because we haven't haven't gotten the subdivision. Yeah, that's a map. Uh, if I could also add, uh, you can see on the map that's up on the screen that, that we're showing not only the ad hoc connection, but we're also got an arrow with a separate roadway connection to McCrimmon for our internal 
Street, as well as a proposed connection to Lewis Stevens. So those will be our vehicular connections. And then as, me, as you said, Matt, there will be internal streets that the townhomes will actually be served off of. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. I did not see that until you just pointed out. Thank you. Steve, no further questions from me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jeff Moncrief, any questions? Yeah, hey, as a new board member, I apologize because I've missed some of the discussions before, but I, I was just curious. I heard a neighborhood concern about timing on construction. I was just curious from start to finish, you know, about how long they thought the development would take and then, uh, you know, how quickly would you get started once approved? Uh, Bob or Amanda, do you want to uh, you know, give an idea, an estimate of the, the timeline for construction? Yeah, I, I can take that. Um, Bob Davenport with TriPoint Homes. So, you know, we would probably get able to get started at the end of next year in 22, um, would take us probably nine to 12 months to develop. And then probably, you know, with, with this unit count, uh, probably three years plus to sell through. Thanks, that just gives me an idea, I appreciate it. Certainly. Questions? Good, Jeff. Good. No more questions. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jessica McClure, any questions? Um, yeah, just a couple. Some of them have already been answered, um, and I apologize if I missed this in the presentation. Is the development constructing McCrimmon Parkway, or just dedicating right of way, or partial construction for access? Where does that stand? It's constructing McCrimmon Parkway. So McCrimmon okay. Parkway from the eastern boundary of the site um, all the way to the, the western property line. So the full okay. the full length of that southern property line of the of the site. So okay, perfect. That answers the rest of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary Jo Hill, any questions tonight? Um, I have sort of the same question as Jessica Pearson, and I just wanted to confirm that the access points to the subdivision, since it is infill, are coming off of two on McCrimmon and one off of Lewis Stevens, and then one at the top on, uh, what is that road between that and the, oh, the northern subdivision? And Brock? Is Enbrock the one that cuts through the middle and come, cuts through on the western side? Yes, that's correct. Edinburgh, yes. Okay. So that on both sides, plus the the, the uh, entry point to the east on McCrimmon and then Lewis Stevens are four accesses into the into the subdivision. That's correct. Yep. All right. I just wanted to clarify that. Appreciate it. That's all I have. Hey, thanks. Uh, Andy Coe, any questions? Uh, no additional questions that already haven't already been asked. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, for myself, uh, I think all my questions have been asked. I have a, a just a general question for the applicant or maybe even the staff. Uh, this is certainly I'm not advocating or saying this should be included. I'm, it's just a, something going forward. Um, when, when new construction is going to happen in Cary townhomes, Whatever are there are there thoughts that uh, pre wiring garages to handle a charger an EV charger would be something considered or is, are we not ready to go that far I'm not advocating the actual charger I'm talking about the just the wiring what what are the what are your thoughts on that. So from the applicant's perspective, um, you know, we've we've talked about it before kind of informally. I know uh, other developments have done it and I know some other municipalities um, have started, you know, leaning in that direction, but we haven't, you know, we haven't made any that any commitment uh, in that regard to for this project. Um, that's not to say that they, you know, they won't be built that way, but we just we just don't know at this point because we're not not far enough along. And, and that's a fair. I'm just planting the seed as, you know, probably we'll be doing a lot of that because of, uh, you know, 
five, it's not going to happen now, but five, six, seven, eight years from now, you know, it's something that uh, will be will be very important. Right. Okay, perfect. Did any anyone else have any other questions? Okay, Steve, not, Steve, can I ask one more question? Yeah, please go ahead. This is for staff. Um, Katie, during your presentation, you mentioned a mix of uses, but the only use we're considering is residential. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, this, this site is located in a designation called the mixed neighborhood development category. Um, that may have, that may have been what I was referring to. Um, the mixed neighborhood development category is kind of a broad area in the Cary Community Plan that we describe as is the area within two miles of Research Triangle Park. Um, so within the mixed, uh, great map, um, within this mixed neighborhood, it's essentially everything in the, I know we've got a lot of shades of pink that we're looking at, but the mixed neighborhood is um, the area that's like the truest pink with, within these shades. Um, it is about, all two miles from Research Triangle Park. It's intended to provide housing to Research Triangle Park and a mixture of types of housing and types of densities. So that's where it gets its its uh, its name. So within this site, the applicants are proposing townhomes and maybe um, a small amount of detached dwellings. But overall, um, when you look at the mixed neighborhood category, the town of Cary is going to be looking throughout the, you know throughout that entire designation. Um, for a wide variety of housing types to make sure we have uh, proper housing for RTP. Thank, thank you for clarifying that. I was just confused by the term and this makes a lot more sense. Great, thank you. Perfect, any, any other questions? Okay, um, would uh, someone like to make a motion for 21 RAZ06 McCrimmon Parkway and Lewis Stephen Drive? I think the words have now popped up on the screen. Um, sure, Steve, I'll make a motion. This Thank is you. Jessica Pearson. I move that the board find case number 21 REZ06 is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans for the reasons set forth in the staff report, presentation and discussion by the planning and zoning board. Perfect, um, can I get a second for that? Second, oh, this is a, uh, go ahead. Oh, this is John Sorrell, second. Thank you, John. Okay, perfect. Um, let's move into just uh, kind of the final discussion on this motion. I'll just go down the roll here. If you have any other additional comments, uh, please please share. Uh, and we'll start with uh, with Jessica since it was um, her her motion. Uh, th thank you, Steve. I, I would like. Um... The board to consider supporting this rezoning because I do feel that it's consistent with the Cary community plan. Um, specifically, the, the live shape and move chapters. Um, so shape um, as Katie was just describing the, the mix of um, residential types um, and being within close proximity to RTP as well as the live chapter. We definitely need more town homes in the town of Cary to provide um, a level of affordability for people who are maybe not looking for a single family detached home uh, or maybe priced out of that type of uh, housing situation. And then, of course, this one's very strong in the move chapter uh, with all of the transportation connections that are being made. Um, and thank you to Jessica McClure for clarifying that the applicant is required to build the road. So um, that's mainly the reasons why I would like to see us support this rezoning. Perfect, thanks. Uh, uh, John Sorrell, any, any comments? Yeah, I'll echo that. Um, there's a lot of places where I see consistency with the plan, you know, specifically in the type of use that we're seeing, the density that we're seeing. Uh, but I think the biggest opportunity that I see uh, to tie into the plan and the biggest risk uh, for the town is in the move section. Um, this site has so many critical grids. Um, it's kind of weird to see an infill site um, that has improvements on two major roadways and a greenway. Um, and it's kind of a linchpin. It connects them all. Um, and it, it appears to have done that well and integrated it with the site. So 
uh, really happy to see that and uh, think it's a, a good addition to the town. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks. Um, Mike Roselli, any comments? Uh, honestly, uh, nothing that Jessica and, and John didn't just say. Um, and, and I don't see anything that um, that came from the applicant or staff to make me think that anything was inconsistent uh, with the comprehensive plan. So, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jeff Moncrief. No, I would just like to say I'm excited to see, you know, as my first opportunity to, to uh, envision a case. In the last three years, I was on the Economic Development Committee and was heavily involved in developing, you know, the Imagine Carry plan. And so it's a neat transition to see and uh, am appreciative of the applicant and their willingness to be, you know, collaborative with the town. And it just seems like a win-win for the community and uh, heading in the right direction. So I'm excited. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Jessica McClure. Um, I mean, I, I support it. It makes sense where it's at. We definitely need to increase the supply of housing. Um, frankly, whatever type it is in the town of Cary right now to kind of control those prices a little bit. Um, but I think it makes sense. You know, always exciting to see another link of a major roadway here. You know, a connection and frontage on another major roadway uh, come to fruition. So looking forward to it. Perfect. Um, Mary Jo Hill, any comments? I agree with what's been said in terms of the carry plan or the carry um, community plan. The engage where we're looking at um, a greenway that's already envisioned that's going to um, parallel this new development is makes it a really exciting proposition for future as well as the move that was already mentioned the move policies that uh, address the fact that we've got major roadways that embrace it and make it accessible as well as its location close to the park. So I think for all the reasons that have been stated, it's a great opportunity to build out uh, additional housing options. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Andy Coe, any comments? No, just I support the, uh, Jessica's motion as well. This checks a lot of boxes in regards to the plan and um, appreciate the thorough job that the staff and everyone has done this evening to uh, provide all the details and answer all the questions. I think um, this aligns very nicely with, with the plan and, uh, and definitely support the motion. Thank you. Okay, perfect, thanks. And I also will be supporting this. I, I think uh, as, as has been already said, this board has spent a lot of time worrying about access points, traffic, roads, and this is really, uh, a nice one where I feel that everything's been taken in consideration and um, uh, it's, it's actually, it's actually good to see that. So I, I, I too will be supporting this. Okay. Um, any, any other comments that didn't get to already collect? Um, Steve, I just, I feel bad that no one mentioned the great architectural conditions that have been offered by the applicant. I mean, <laughs> Very good. I you think that, be mentioning that. Yeah, I think that's a another benefit. You know, the um, the all that they're applying the architectural conditions to all sides of the building. So that that's another positive. We want quality development in Cary. That's a, awesome. I, and I agree with you. That's a great comment. And, and that was something that was brought up in the prior meeting. Uh, the, um, it was good to see uh, action taken to that. Okay. Any other any other comments? Okay, if not, um, it's time to vote. Um, I'll call the roll for vote and, and um, just indicate I if you agree or no if you do not. Uh, John Sorrell? Aye. Mike Roselli? Aye. Jessica Pearson? Aye. Jeff Moncrief? Aye. Jessica McClure? Aye. Mary Jo Hill? Aye. Andy Coe? Aye. And I, Steve Crutchfield, also vote in the affirmative aye. Okay, awesome. Thank you for, uh, for bringing that case forward to the applicant and the staff. Okay, it's time to move on to our next case on the agenda, which is 19 REZ 33. 3012 Holly Spring Road rezoning. 
Uh, planning manager Katie Dry will also uh, handle this presentation. Uh, there's not going to be an applicant for this case because the town of Perry is the applicant. And uh, as usual, all board members will have an opportunity to ask questions of the staff following the presentation. And um, with that, uh, Ms. Dry, would you like to go ahead and take it away? Yes, thank you. Um, so this is a rezoning request um, for 28 acres of property at 3012 Holly Springs Road. And um, Carrie initiated this request in co cooperation with the property owner, which is the North Carolina Department of Transportation or NCDOT. The site is a quarter of a mile south of Lily Atkins Road. It's on the west side of Holly Springs Road. The site's currently vacant and it will remain undeveloped as the land is located entirely within the floodplain. NCDOT has designated the site um, as a mitigation site. It's specifically named the Spite Branch Wetlands Mitigation and Stream Restoration Site. Carrie annexed the land, which is shown here in green in this particular map. It was annexed in May of this year as part of a rezoning and annexation for the Lily Atkins assemblage, which is shown in pink to the north. We annex the site because it's considered intervening property as provided in state law that can be used to make land contiguous to Carrie's corporate limits. And this is not an uncommon practice. It's a standard part of the annexations. However, we more often typically see intervening property when it comes to state owned right of way. So now that the site is annexed, the next step is for Carrie to assign a zoning district to the property. We propose a zoning district of resource recreation or RR. The RR zoning district intends to protect natural resources, watersheds, and water supplies. The property is entirely within the floodplain and it's an important natural resource for habitat protection and flood mitigation. Our analysis of the request with the Cary Community Plan finds that policies from the Engage and Shape chapters apply. The future growth framework map designates the site as traditional neighborhood. And as, des as described within the future growth framework map, um, it notes the importance of open space, parks and greenways, and that includes dedicated open space for passive recreation. The plan states that open space serves as habitat for local wildlife, areas to preserve tree canopy and stream buffers. The plan also states that the RR district is an appropriate zoning district to accomplish this goal. The Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Master Plan identifies the Swift Creek Greenway Corridor extending from Lily Atkins Road across the northeastern portion of the site. Carrie proposed, Carrie proposed a great separated greenway crossing of Holly Springs Road. That will require a coordination with NCDOT. And at this time, Carrie has not allocated funding for the design, property acquisition, or construction of this crossing. We also would like to note that the site is not proposed to be developed as a park. The closest existing park is the Jack Smith Park, which is approximately one mile southwest of the site. Carrie staff facilitated a neighborhood meeting in February of 2020. This was held jointly with the Lily Atkins rezoning neighborhood meeting. At the neighborhood meeting, staff explained the state legislation on the annexation and how it applied in this case. Staff also explained the resource recreation zoning district and answered questions from attendees. There were near, nearly 100 nearby property owners who attended. They had questions regarding the annexation rezoning process as well as floodplain regulations. Most of the questions, however, pertain to the Lily Atkins rezoning, and there were um, general questions also regarding flooding and floodplain in this general area. And since the public hearing notice was sent and staff has not received um, any calls regarding um, this particular rezoning. At the town council public hearing, uh, there were no speakers at the public hearing, no comments from council, and there have been no changes since the public hearing. Staff's preliminary finding is for consistency with the Imagine Carry Community Plan. We find that the request supports the engage, move, and shape policies. We note that the RR zoning is for open space, and the Cary Community Plan states that open space serves as habitat for local wildlife, tree canopy, and stream buffers. 
And so this concludes the South's presentation. Um, and as the chair noted, carries the applicant for this case. And so there are no additional speakers. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that any of you have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and as we said, there's no applicants, so uh, we can jump right into um, any uh, question the board members have. And we'll start off with uh, Andy Coe. Do you have any questions? I do not. That seems pretty straightforward. Thank you. No problem. Mary Jo Gill, any questions? I agree. It's hard to argue with um, the proposed zoning regulation and keeping the land unoccupied, given the fact it's in a stream buffer. So I'm good. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jessica McClure? No questions. Jeff Moncrief, any questions? No questions. Jessica Pearson? Um, I just have one question. Um, why are there no zoning designations across Holly Springs Road? Is that in Morseville? Um, the, to the east of uh, Holly Springs Road? It, it's, yeah. in, it's in Wake County. Um, oh, okay. Carrie's um, corporate limits will stop at Holly Springs Road at this particular location. As you go a little further north on Holly Springs Road, you'll see that Carrie um, Carrie's corporate limits extends on both sides of the road, but this particular location, um, Carrie's annexation limits would end um, at Holly Springs Road, and it would be Wake County um, across the street. Um, does w Wake County have a similar designation in the parcels a a immediately across the street? I believe many of the properties um, in this area are zoned R80 or R40. Which, um, which is a very, very low density um, zoning district. Um, also, the, the properties as you as you go east across Holly Springs Road, um, the, the further you go east, you're within the Swift Creek Land Management Plan, which regulates um, densities and land uses and even utility extensions because it's watershed um, it's watershed protection for um, Lake Wheeler Road right? for Lake Wheeler, um, which is the water supply for Raleigh. Okay, thank you. No more questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mike Roselli? No questions. Uh, John Sorrell? Only had one quick one, and I think you touched on this, but I, I didn't, I didn't grasp it 100%. Um, you mentioned a future greenway, and of course, anywhere along a floodplain like this, utilities are a, a possibility at some point in the future. This designation would not prohibit um, your future greenway connections or utility connections that may need to run along the creek. It, it would not. Um, a greenway would be an allowed use within the, the resource recreation um, zoning district. Perfect. Thanks. And I myself have no no questions. Uh, any 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 questions that we didn't get to? Okay. Well, having said that, um, would someone like to make a motion for 19 REZ 33 3012 Holly Spring Road rezoning? Motion is up on the screen, so you can uh, read it off. Sure. I move that the board find case number 19 REZ 33 is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans for the reasons set forth in the staff report, presentation, and discussion by the planning and zoning board. Is there a second? I'll second to Chair Joe. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll just move into uh, discussion. Uh, uh, Andy Coe, any comments? Uh, no additional comments. I support the motion. Oh, and I'm sorry. I should have started with you, Mike. Any any uh, any comments on? I got to the that uh, motion. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, no, no comments. Okay, perfect. And Mary Jo. Um, no further comments. I think this is a, a no brainer, frankly. Perfect. Uh, Jessica McClure. Um, I support it. I think it makes sense. Kind of glad to see this come back um, with the Lily Atkins. Last time I know there was some concerns regarding the wildlife out there. So it's it's nice to come see this come back and get an official designation. Uh, Jeff Moncrief, comments? 
No, I, I'm a supportive of the uh, of the motion. Thank you. Okay, um, Jessica Pearson. Um, my only comment is that I just really appreciate that this will be because it's entirely in the floodplain is also a flood mitigation site. It it as everybody else said, it makes total sense, and I support the motion. Uh, John Sorrell. Nothing to add. Thanks. Okay, and for myself, uh, the only comment I have is um, after about close to 60 of these meetings, <laughs> I, I can't even think back. I'm sure there is a time that we actually had a rezoning case for open space. So uh, I, I agree with what's been said. This is a uh, this is this is really uh, a good one and an easy one, I think, for everyone. Any other comments? Okay, having heard none, um, I'm going to call the 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 roll to vote aye or no on the acceptance of the of the motion. Andy Coe. Aye. Mary Jo Hill. Aye. Jessica McClure. Aye. Jeff Moncrief. Aye. Jessica Pearson. Aye. Mike Roselli. Aye. John Sorrell. Aye. And I, Steve Crutchfield, also vote in the affirmative aye. Okay, that was our last case. And we do have some uh, new business. And that is that uh, being, again, that this is a new year, we need to select a vice chair. And the vice chair will support and back up the chair uh, whenever I'm not available. And this individual could be called upon to start meeting, facilitate the discussion, and uh, and help direct conclusions and votes. Uh, it is perfectly proper for you to nominate a fellow board member, and it is perfectly proper for you to nominate or quote volunteer yourself. Uh, there's no no problem with that at all, and uh, so don't be shy if this is something you're interested in. Uh, now's the time to, to to speak up. So, would anyone like to nominate a, a fellow board member and or volunteer? This is Mary Jo. I would like to nominate Jessica Pearson as the vice chair. Okay. Are there any other uh, nominations? Mary Jo, I was gonna I was gonna nominate you. Do you want to do it? <laughs> no, I think you would be much more qualified. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say, has anybody checked in with Don? I know he's kind of got a tenure. Yeah, but that's a good I guess point. if he misses it, is that this is his vote? Sorry. <laughs> well, can we vote. nominate him and vote on him without him being here? Is that okay? Yes, yes, you can, but you're under, the, you know, the way this works is, you know, if you're, if you're here, you know, fine. If you're not, that's okay too. But yes, it is, it is proper. If uh, if another person was nominated that isn't here, uh, Katie, did I just say anything out of order? I don't I'll, believe so. I'll step in with that. Excellent, uh, thank you, Matt. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I told you I'd need you. So. You know, and here it comes. Here I am, but that's why I'm yeah, here, right? Uh, we almost here. made it. We almost made it. Uh, let me get my video started too. Um, so yeah, it's fine. He's a board member. He's 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 in he's in the game here. Um, his he can be nominated. Uh, however, I don't know who wants to have that conversation with him if he, <laughs> if he was exactly. voted in. Um, so I think, uh, I, I would say, I would say that you can do it, but, um, I would think about whether or not you want to, given the, uh, this, just the circumstances. And the circumstances would be, and I'm, I'm just, since, since this is not, this is just board business, he may or may not want to do it and it would be. And, and that would be, a, you know, an issue, I guess. And I think it, it, it this is a this is a, a good time, especially with the new board members here. The vice chair, what the vice chair ba basically does is they're the backup chair. So if uh, Mr. Crutchfield, for whatever reason, can't make a meeting, um, or something happens to him during a meeting, hope that's never going to happen. But if that were to happen, uh, the vice chair steps up and becomes the chair for that meeting, either the remainder of that meeting or that meeting. And so that's what this responsibility um, really entails from a practical standpoint. And it seems Thank like you, 
it seems like he so, should be able to say yes or no. He wants to take on that responsibility in the moment. Okay, uh, so the, right now I have the nomination of Jess Jessica Pearson. And are there any other names that other board members would like to put forth at this time? This is Mike. Um, I, I, I would nominate John Sorrell um, if, if he was interested. I'll, I'll probably hold off. I've got five little ones and uh, the odds of me making it to the volume of beatings that I would need to <laughs> is, is risky. Um, so I'll, I'll hold off and let somebody else roll with that. Thank you, though. Uh -huh. All right, perfect. Any other thoughts? Well, I, I'd just like to say I'm willing to serve in this capacity if it's the board's desire. Um, I only have two little ones, so I, ha I think the probability is higher than I can attend. But I also, I mean, I also really do respect Don Hamilton and, um, you know, I mean, we could nominate and vote on him and then he could resign and then we could do it again. That's a possibility. My my preference is to go forward with what we have right here in front of us today. Okay. Tonight. Matt, is that okay? It's 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 your call. So so the essentially the motion has been made. She has been nominated. So Correct. someone else can come in and and uh, second it. Uh, but again, it is for everybody here. It's normally a good idea to pick someone who wants to do it. Um, and it it sounds like. We're there, but I don't want to to speak for Jessica. We're Don. This this can change if things happen. If he comes in and is really disappointed that he wasn't named, you guys can do it. Jessica, you could resign and he could be named. So I mean, there there are ways around this. Um, okay. I do like the idea. I, I am I'm with Mr. Crutchfield right now. Where uh, I'm with the chair in that I think it's a good idea to um, do it with everybody who's actually here right now, just to make sure that uh, everyone is going yeah. in with open eyes and. Willing hearts. <laughs> I'd like to state for the record that I appreciate Jessica McClure bringing up the fact that Don Hamilton has seniority on the committee, and I have a ton of respect for him. So, well, I just well, want to state that for the record. <laughs> well said. Okay, we have a we have a motion right now for Jessica Pearson to be vice chair. Would somebody please second that motion? I'll second the motion. I, I agree with your sentiments, Steve. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, having put that forth and having a, a second, uh, I'd like to uh, take a vote now uh, on, on the vice chair. I'll start with uh, John Sorrell. Aye. Mike Roselli. Jessica Pearson. Aye. <laughs> Jeff Moncrief. Aye. Jessica McClure. Aye. Mary Jo Hill. Aye. Andy Coe. Aye. And I, Steve Crutchfield, also strongly support aye. Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Thank you for volunteering. You're um, welcome. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, that really concludes everything on our agenda. Uh, I'd like to really, again, thank the new board members. Uh, you guys did great. You jumped in, had a lot to contribute to the meeting, so that's greatly appreciated. And um, if there's nothing else, then I would like to announce that this meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good night.